Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our official May 2021 forecast. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you hope this upcoming May of 2021 goes? Do you want it to be warmer, colder, stormier, drier? Let me know exactly how you want this upcoming May to go, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this one, and first things first, we're going right into our precipitation forecast. Uh, so in these monthly forecasts, if you've never seen them, we go over the precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and then in the spring months, the severe weather forecast, and then our overall forecast at the very end. Starting things out here, we see that we have more dry conditions expected here for the western United States here. You take that from Washington and Idaho, down through Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, and then even in through Arizona and New Mexico. I expect basically the entire western seaboard there to be more dry than what is typical. So you can see below average precipitation expected for all of these regions. All right, now let's move on because I have a second layer here to these below average precipitation regions. For California, Nevada, and then even through uh, Arizona and a little bit of New Mexico, I do expect a little bit more of some below average precipitation. This is where I'm more confident in that. And I, and I feel almost... Uh, you know, 90% confident that the southwestern corner of the United States will be dealing with some below average precipitation overall. Uh, this has been the trend for the past 10 years, uh, and I don't expect that to really change uh, this upcoming May at all of 2021. Now let's go ahead and move into the above average precipitation now. And as you can see, basically the entire eastern two-thirds of the United States I expect to have above average precipitation. Uh, this is our first layer, which means some areas will not be dealing with the above average precipitation. Clearly, uh, not every single area in this green shade will see above average precipitation. But it was really hard for me to pinpoint wh what areas would and wouldn't see the above average precipitation within this eastern two-thirds. Like I said, uh, it, it's really difficult to pinpoint those exact regions. I know that most areas in this eastern two-thirds will see above average precipitation. I do know that some of these areas will not, though, however. I hope that makes sense. If anybody has any further questions about that, they can leave a comment down below, and I'd be happy to try to explain that more in depth. Uh, but basically, I think at least 75% of the areas in this green area will be dealing with above-average precipitation, uh, but there will certainly be a high percentage of areas that also will not see above-average precipitation. But there's overwhelming odds that most areas within there will see above-average precipitation. Now, we even have a second layer here to the above average precipitation. This is our darker green region. This is gonna be for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, down through the rest of the Ohio Valley, down through the Appalachians, and even down through the Gulf states. And this is just where I think there will be even further above average precipitation uh, and storminess overall. Keep in mind that most of this area is also involved with the areas that expect to see a lot of severe weather throughout the month of May. So we're going to be watching for that as well because above average precipitation usually means above average storminess, which means likely above average severe weather as well. So we're going to be watching for that very closely. Again, my temperature forecast is coming up alongside my severe weather forecast for May and then even the overall forecast. So that'll tell the other half of the story, basically. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that temperature forecast in just a moment. Now, first things first, here is the above average temperature region where we expect above average temperatures uh, we do see that some of the southeast is involved in this. Most, if not all, of the Gulf states are involved in this as well. Uh, and then the four corner states all the way up through most of the Rockies and then the west coast of the United States, especially the southwest portion there of the western United States. This is where we expect above average temperatures to be likely, but keep in mind this is only the first shade. So I do expect above average temperatures. You might not really feel it, but at least on paper, this will certainly be above average temperatures for most of these regions, just like with the precipitation. Uh, this first layer is kind of like that. And then we have a second layer here of the above average temperatures. And this is going to be for uh, the four corner states and then even down through Texas and Louisiana. Again, this is an area where we're just even more confident in the above average temperatures here for the south central and portions of the southwestern United States, especially the four corner states there. I feel very confident that we will be seeing above average temperatures for these darker red regions. 
Alright, now it's finally time to talk about the below normal temperatures here. And as you can see, for the north central United States and through the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, and some of the interior northeastern United States as well, we all expect to see a or sorry, below normal temperatures for these lighter blue regions. Uh, and this is again our first layer, which means it's a little lower confidence, but I certainly think that there is a high likelihood that we will see mostly below average temperatures for this region. Then within this darker blue region there for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes, you can see we have a moderate shade there of uh, blue, which indicates that we are more confident in the below average temperatures for this darker blue region. So that's just how it works. Our confidence is dictated based on a one, two, and three uh, color shading there. We usually do not use the third one unless we are like 100% sure. Uh, I very rarely use the third shade of either the above or below normal temperatures or precipitation. Uh, so it is not a surprise that we're not using it this time around at all either. I only use that in very specific uh, circumstances. I used to use them a lot in the weekly forecast because it's much easier to, you know, be able to tell what's happening a week from now uh, rather than looking at a whole month or so. Uh, but yeah, so this is about as confident as we ever are. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that exciting severe weather forecast for the month of May and then also the awesome overall forecast as well in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the May forecast of 2021 severe weather forecast. We have two shades here. Uh, one is where I generally expect uh, near normal or slightly above normal severe weather, and that is that kind of pinkish shade there. Uh, this is an area that is in between the cold and the warm air masses on our temperature forecast and also expects above average precipitation. So those two things being combined uh, is basically the secret sauce for an overall above average severe weather month. That does not always occur, so that's why we have a pink shade because that's saying it looks like it should, should be above average severe weather. That doesn't mean it will be above average severe weather. We also have this kind of cherry red area for uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. This is the same exact thing. We have the above average and below average temperatures kind of combining right there alongside above average precipitation. But this is historically the region that would see a lot of severe weather during the month of May. So that's why I've combined the historical alongside what we're expecting this upcoming month there together and that is what gives us that cherry red region. So overall we do expect above average severe weather to be possible this upcoming May. We did expect it for April as well and that didn't really pan out. Uh, so I want you to know to take this with a grain of salt because just because things look perfect that doesn't mean it will end up being uh, uh, you know a severe weather and a very very active severe weather month. It certainly seems more likely than not uh, but that does not mean that it will just like April like I said before. Uh, and I'm here to admit that we did call for above average severe weather and that did not occur last month. All right, now here is our overall forecast. So we're going to start out in the western United States. We always do. Uh, and we're expecting more dry. You saw that on the precipitation forecast. We have kind of that uh, very light tan shade and then the darker uh, brown there that is uh, kind of just showing you where there's the slightly below average precipitation and then the far below average precipitation expected. Typical snow for the Rockies. I know all of those regions don't really see snow. It's mostly the high elevation areas, but I kind of just combined it all uh, just because I don't feel like pinpointing those exact mountain ranges, especially when there is literally hundreds of peaks in there. I hope that's, you know, you guys understand that. Uh, we expect hot conditions down there for New Mexico, even Texas and Louisiana. It's going to get very hot, I believe. We see some Arctic air expected for that blue region, but overall just below average temperatures uh, is what you can expect. Uh, but earlier on, it seems like there could be some Arctic air the first week or two of May, especially, you know, later in the month, it's going to be harder to get that very, very cold air to come down as we approach summertime. Uh, but we're still kind of in a transition month. So the earlier we are in May, the more cold that air could potentially be. The lighter blue is where we expect some below average temperatures to occur. Now in between there, that's where we have the severe weather outbreaks possible. Uh, this is, again, what exactly what we called for for April, and it seemed very likely, or very possible at least, uh, then, and it seems very possible as well this month. Again, that does not mean that it will happen. It just means that there's a higher probability this year compared to others that it would. Uh, for the southeast, we expect warmer conditions down there for the southeast. 
It should be quite nice at times. And then for the northeastern United States in the mid-Atlantic, we expect stormy conditions overall, as well as a flip-flop temperature pattern could go back and forth a little bit there, especially earlier on in the month. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6. This is as high as we will go for a monthly or seasonal forecast. When you're talking about a 30-day period, uh, your confidence is never going to be really a 6 out of 6 because that would be saying, like, this is 99% going to happen. Uh, that is never going to be the case for a 30-day forecast. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that we will get any accumulation with this snowstorm that was ongoing yesterday and through this morning? And James Marr said, yes, I do believe there will be a few slushy inches of snow for upstate New York. Very, very interesting there for James Marr, from James Marr, and I do actually agree there as well. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belomo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cordalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Garys, and John Kulisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weather, our Weather Top Dog Hair Farms 1, and then our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to join this one, that'll be located next to that subscribe button. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button. Be sure to comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video.